Welcome back to another Name It, Frame It, Tame It by UDL Partners. During this time when we are immersed in all things UDL with Shelley Moore, we can't help but think about universal supports. How can educators rethink universal supports and design for all? Let's find out a way in just a few minutes. Shelley Moore defines universal supports as tools that some students need based on their goals, needs, interests, strengths, and stretches, otherwise known as things we need support with or need to get better at. She defines universal strategies as actions that some students need based on the same categories. When we think about universal, we think about all. So how can we teach all students to use these supports or tools and strategies or actions in meaningful ways? Let's name this barrier universally designing for all feels overwhelming. We can frame this barrier on the UDL guidelines under action and expression, specifically checkpoint 6.3, facilitate managing information and resources. These checkpoints can apply to us as educators as well. One way we can tame this barrier is with the use of Shelley Moore's planning guide. Using this graphic organizer or template for organizing information about our learners helps to create ease when designing universally. Step one, identify the student's needs. If we anticipate the needs of students before they are not successful, we are inadvertently planning universally. Step two, consider the tools or supports and actions or strategies that will support students to be successful. Using this planning guide, we can see that if we think about all the needs in our spaces on the vertical axis and the supports we can offer on the horizontal axis, we can visually see where students fall and the level of strategies and supports needed. Step three, consider if tools and actions we are planning for are universal. How do we know what makes supports and strategies universal? Supports can be considered essential when we teach them to all students, but they are only used for one. This might happen in a tier three level of support. Supports can be considered targeted when we teach them to all students and there is choice whether they use them or not. This might be the case in a tier two level of support, but what makes them universal is when we teach them to all students and they are useful for all students. This is what should happen in tier one level of support. As you can see in this example, students and their areas of need are identified in the first column. After that, essential, targeted, and universal supports are determined. When we have a cheat sheet, if you will, a graphic organizer or template of strategies and supports, and where learners fall within these ranges, it makes designing instruction, assessments, and our spaces an easier lift and sets up all learners for success.